Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and I'm really excited to introduce you to today's guest who is trying to make a difference through his running. If you've been tuning into the show for a while, you know I love a good inspirational running story, so I'm excited to share this one with you. And also, for those of you who aren't runners, I'm excited to share that you can help make a difference for the cause that is close to my guest's heart without even having to lace up your running shoes. So be sure to listen to the end to learn how to do that. All right, without further ado, let's dive into today's episode. My guest today is Lauren Zidomerski. Lauren is a pretty normal guy. He's a motion picture production attorney for the Walt Disney Studios. However, Lauren is trying to do something extraordinary. On April 16th, he's going to be running the Boston Marathon backwards literally turned around and attempting to break the current Guinness World Record for the fastest marathon run backwards. The record there is currently three hours, 43 minutes, and 39 seconds. He's attempting this feat in memory of his brother, Brian, who passed away from epilepsy at the age of seven. Lauren is raising money and awareness for epilepsy research and people and families affected by epilepsy with a goal of raising $100,000. Lauren, welcome to the podcast show. I'm so excited to have you as a guest today. Thanks for having me. So I want to ask first, maybe the obvious question here, right? Why are you running backwards for epilepsy research and to help people and families affected by epilepsy? Well, I've been raising uh, money for epilepsy for the last 20 years. And I, um, I, it, I, in total, I've raised, uh, with the help of my dad, over $250,000 wow. uh, for, for the Epilepsy Foundation. Um, and, you know, I've, I've always raised money from family, friends, coworkers, kind of my, my own network. Mm-hmm. And I decided uh, like two years ago, I uh, decided that I was going to qualify for the Boston Marathon, which as most people know, is not an easy feat. You know, it's one of the most elite races in the world. And because right, I'm and under 30. they make 30, it harder every time, right? <laughs> they do, yeah. And, and because I'm under 35 and I'm a guy, I'm in the hardest uh, qualifying mm. uh, bracket. I think my qualifying time was, three hours and five minutes, which just a couple of years ago seemed like literally impossible. I was like a 340 or 350 marathon runner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I made the decision I was going to qualify. I created a training plan. I stuck to it. You know, I was running like 55, 60 miles a week, you know, during the peak of my training, Mm -hmm. which was more than I had had ever ran before. And I told myself, if I qualify for Boston, I'm going to do something big for Boston where I can really raise awareness for epilepsy and raise uh, a ton of money like I've never done before. And, you know, I qualified at the Mountain Beach Marathon in Ventura uh, last June. Mm-hmm. And I started racking my brain trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to do? How, you know, what's, what's a big thing that I can do to raise, you know, awareness and get people's attention. And somebody suggested, well, what about, you know, a marathon world record? And I said, Oh, that's, that's interesting. And so I went on the Guinness uh, Book of World Records website and I started looking through the records and almost all of them are like costume related. Okay. Like the fastest marathon dress is a clown or something like that. And I was like, I don't want to wear a costume. That's, that's cheesy. And then I stumbled <laughs> upon the fastest marathon run backwards. I didn't really know anything about backwards running, but it mm-hmm. seemed doable. You know, the three hours, 43 minutes, 39 seconds, which is about a eight and a half minute per mile pace. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Yep, this is it. I'm going to do this, and that's why I'm doing it." <laughs> Love that. So, what have been the reactions for people just uh, finding out about it, or how's the fundraising going so far? Uh, the fundraising going great. I'm I'm just around fifteen thousand, with you know more money coming in every day. Mm-hmm. I still have just less than ten weeks until until the race, and you know, hopefully, I'll I'm going to be the world record holder of the fastest marathon run backwards and you know I can get you know national attention and you know awareness um, I mean my goal really is to raise as much awareness for epilepsy as possible um, and, and as far as people's reactions I get all kinds of reactions um, you know I generally either run at the 
uh, gym on the Disney lot um, on okay. a treadmill backwards, which by now I think everyone is, just sees me and goes, oh, it's that crazy guy running backwards on the treadmill every day. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then, and then after the run out for trails uh, of Griffith Park because, you know, there's not many obstacles. There's, in generally, there's not too many people. And I get the, I get crazy looks. I get stares. I get people yelling at me. I had a, oh, no. I had a woman who, I had a woman who hugged me. I think she, she was very excited to see me running backwards. So I get all kinds of reactions. <laughs> So how, how is the, what do you do to train for that then? I guess, I mean, obviously running backwards, that would be important, but you know, like, and how, and how are you trying to work on the pacing for it? I mean, just, it seems, seems like I would be so overwhelmed to even get started. So I definitely commend you for uh, <laughs> not being yeah. that scared. Yes. So when I, when I first, uh, you know, when I first decided I was going to do this and also, you know, when I really kicked off uh, my training, I, I was asking people, you know, people that who are better runners than me, coaches, you know, how do I do this? Nobody really knew. I mean, it, I didn't really get much of a response. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to stick to my normal marathon training, but just do it backwards, which is generally, I do like two moderate runs a week and then uh, a tempo run, mm -hmm. an interval run and a long run. So five, yeah. five days a week. Got it. Got it. So do you feel like it's difficult? What are some of the challenges when you're, when you're running backwards? Oh, it, it is absolutely difficult. And, you know, if anyone out there wants to try it, I encourage you to. I know my disclaimer is that it's, it's dangerous and you right. should not do it around ca cars. <laughs> do it like, you know, in a park or on the beach or, you know, something like that. But, yeah, it, it is really hard. And, you know, the first time I ran backwards after I made the decision and it actually – had told people that I was going to, you know, try to break this record. I was like, oh, you know, I should probably try this now. So I went out and I was like, I'm going to run a half mile backwards. And it was so hard. And I started questioning my decision at that point. But I stuck, I, I stuck with it and I uh, kept increasing my mileage every time I ran backwards by like mm -hmm. a quarter of a mile. And slowly my, my body got, got used to it. And now um, I don't know if it'll ever get used to it. I mean, on my calves are still whether you're walking backwards or forwards if you only have 15 minutes that is your halfway point reminder turn around now always just sore and rock mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. um, i would say it's the hardest on my calves and my glutes got it so what's the furthest that you've run backwards so far in your training so far i'm 14 miles okay wow um, and yeah yeah and uh you know this weekend this weekend, I'm probably not going to do that many, but then the weekend after, I'm going to try to get up to 18 and then, um, you know, try to try to do like maybe six 20 mile plus runs backwards on the weekend before the race. And I'm going to be doing the LA Marathon. I'm going to run the last 20 to 22 miles of it backwards as a long training run. So I'll be out there on the on the course if anyone's anyone's watching. <laughs> Very cool. That's me. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So now just maybe share this a little bit more about epilepsy so people, you know, can learn more about it too, just, you know, and, and the reason for you running. So how, how prevalent is epilepsy? Anything you can share with us about that and why your I mean, obviously you had your, your brother was affected by it, why it's so important to spread the message. So, so epilepsy is actually much more prevalent than anyone really realizes unless you're, you know, a part of the epilepsy community or otherwise affected. Mm -hmm. It's one in one in twenty six people will be diagnosed with epilepsy in his or her lifetime. Wow. Um, epilepsy is two times more common than cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease combined, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And it it kills it kills about fifty thousand people every year in in the United States, more than breast cancer related deaths. And and the reason I think that most people don't know just how prevalent it is is. No one really talks about it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's still a stigmatized disorder. There's, there's even passages in the Bible that talk about seizures and, the, you know, uh, demonic possession. Sure. So there's been a stigma, stigma around epilepsy for so long. And so, you know, it's possible that, you know, you people listening have coworkers or friends who have epilepsy, but they keep it a secret. And there's also... You know, people are afraid to to lose their driver's license or their ability mm. to, you know, operate heavy machinery at work. And so that also keeps people from talking about it. 
no, that's that's great that you're that you're looking to to raise money to help help the families and also get some research done just to help prevent you know that from happening. So it's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's really the two prongs of, of where the money I'm raising is going to go is research because you know we want to find a cure. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the ultimate goal. But also for um, you know programs that benefit you know people and families affected by epilepsy here in Los Angeles. That's important to me. Sure. Are there any programs that you know about? Like I know sometimes with, when there's fundraising done, I like to have people think about different amounts they might might donate because it might go to a certain thing. Is there are you able, anything along those lines that you know about? Yeah, I mean we we uh, the Appalachian Foundation of Greater Los Angeles puts on a, a camp at uh, the Painted Turtle, which is here in uh, Southern California. Mm-hmm. And it's up in up in the Ona Valley, and it's it was started by Paul Newman. It's like one of the most beautiful camps that you'll ever see. The place is amazing, and um, you know the the Appalachian Foundation has to fundraise for it. So so part of the money for programs will go to that camp. And you know the I I've been volunteering and fundraising with the Appalachian Foundation for twenty years now, as I said before, and mm-hmm. I've been to just so many events and camps, and I met so many people affected by epilepsy, especially young kids and these kids have such an amazing time at, at these camps and these events because, you know, they may be the only person in their school that has seizures, but when they go to these camps and these events, they, they realize that they're, you know, not alone, that there's right. a lot of kids out there that, that suffer from this handicap. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a good, a good thing. Yeah. To, to have them be able to have that experience that, that they're not alone and, it's an amazing camp. You know, every year, or at least the last several years, the money that I've raised from family and friends has mm-hmm. gone towards, or part of it has gone towards this, this camp specifically, because I love this place. The, the yeah. Painted Turtle is, is, is amazing. Yeah, I know. It definitely sounds like a great place. And do you know if anyone, you know, maybe they can't contribute monetarily, do you know if the camp also looks for volunteers to donate their time? Oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure you can <laughs> go on their website. You know, it's all, it's all volunteer-based for the most part, so yeah. Very cool. So I guess, you know, just to let us close out here, we'd love to have you share, I'll put this in the show notes, but where people can follow your journey and if they want to donate to help you with your run, where they should go and, and how they can best connect with you. Sure. So I, I set up a website that has a ton of information on there about my story and about epilepsy. And, uh, and you know, you can go visit on there and, and you can also donate directly on my website. And it's bostonbackwards.com. I decided okay. uh, I wanted a nice, simple name. So yeah. uh, Boston, Boston, Boston backwards.com. And then um, on there, you can find my links to social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'm meticulously documenting as best as I can all of my backwards training. And it's, it's, it's pretty entertaining. You know, I've injured myself twice now. I fell once. Oh, boy. And I recently, I think I was running backwards, and I think I stepped on a rock really hard. And so I, it's, it's feeling much better now. But uh, mm-hmm. I had to like I had to take off like a, over a week from backwards running and just basically just doing the elliptical every day. But and I, I like I ran into a tree once. Uh, there's been all kinds of stuff, so I'm sharing all that on social media. Keeping um, it real. <laughs> and you can, yeah, I'm keeping it real. But you can uh, you can also search Boston backwards uh, or backwards guy on social media, and, and you'll find me. Got it. Well, I, I'm I'm impressed that it's only been the two times. I'm sure I would have I would have had far yeah. more experiences. Yeah, but you know I'm realizing at this point, you know I'm I'm like just less than ten weeks out from the race. You know, mm. one misstep could literally end this whole thing, and so I'm going to be as careful as I can be. And the treadmill is uh, I've realized it's the safest place for me to backwards running because at this point I'm I'm used to running backwards on the treadmill. I'm chances are. I'm not going to fall off it. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, but when, when I'm running at, around Griffith Park, you know, without a spotter, somebody running forward, you can kind of point out, you know, obstacles on the ground or rocks or whatever. It's, it's, it's dangerous. I mean, it, it's, we're not necessarily meant to run backwards. So um, <laughs> it's not the most natural thing in the world, but it's fun. I enjoy it. <laughs> so here, here's a random question for you. Do you look over like sure. the same shoulder the whole time or... Uh, you know, it's it's funny. I favor my left shoulder, and so I have to consciously keep reminding myself to also look over my right shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> because other otherwise, then my my the left side of my neck is going to be more sore than the other. So. <laughs> right, right. No, that's yeah. oh my goodness. 
Well, very yeah. cool, Lauren. Well, I really appreciate you sharing your story and, and what you're doing and, and definitely hope people will, will go check out the website and, and give back to, uh, to help you on your mission. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you for so much for having me on. Yeah. And good luck uh, in LA and Boston. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you're watching the LA marathon, I'm assuming I'm going to be the only person running backwards. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> See? Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Lauren. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi friends, it's Catherine. I hope you enjoy being inspired by Lauren's journey and are ready to go and make your donation of any amount to his bostonbackwards.com page to help him raise awareness for epilepsy and work to fund research to one day end epilepsy. I delayed posting this episode because I had some of my own fundraising efforts going on, but what's great about Lauren's fundraiser is that you can donate any amount. So let's help him reach his next milestone. He's almost at $30,000 raised. Let's help him out today by donating any amount to help him get over that that next milestone of raising $30,000. And he's also closer to that Boston race than we shared in the episode. He's 20 days out the day this episode goes live. So cheer him on. Make sure he gets to Boston feeling well supported. And be sure to share this episode and the fundraising information with a friend so that we can help raise more awareness and funds for this cause together. Thanks so much for listening and being part of the podcast. If you've subscribed, I will chat with you again tomorrow. Bye.